Hi, from my home office here in Pensacola, Florida. Little Pearl's Reflection is a story that I wrote over 20 years ago, long before I knew anything about Martinez or Martinez's cosmology. When I discovered Martinez in 2012, I knew for sure that my story was inspired from a higher realm. So I spent many years searching for just the right illustrator. I met Bodil in Clint in 2014, and I knew then that she had the vision and the creative talent to bring my story to life. Thank you, Bodil. It has been quite a wonderful journey. Martinez Cosmology, the Martinez Center, and my Martinez friends from all over the world are very near and dear to my heart. And I so hope to be able to return to the Martinez Center in 2022. I also hope that you will enjoy our book series, Little Pearl's Reflection, and be able to discover the bits and pieces of Martinez's cosmology that we've woven throughout the mystery adventure. Thank you, and bye for now. I'm so happy to be here again at the Martinez Center. This is my happy place when we come here in the summertime. And I'm excited to share with you my children's series, and we have copies up here for you to see, uh, Little Pearl's Reflection. And I'd like to explain to you how it relates to Martinez's cosmology. Little Pearl's Reflection is a children's mystery adventure series. It's seven books long. Five have been published in English, and thanks to Meta Holland, three have been published in Danish. And I have copies up here for you to see this, those also. So we have two more English to do and um, four more of the Danish to do. Um, I wrote this story for children ages 5 to 10. But what I've found now is that people of all ages seem to enjoy the mystery story. It's a story about all the daily wonders that magically fill our lives. It's a mystery adventure series about the wonders of life. Speaking of life, let's have another look at our guiding theme for week five of the International Weeks. Great thoughts in daily life. The road to initiation goes through our daily experiences, not secret lodges. Everything that we experience is to our advantage in the long run. The cosmic analyses are tools for helping us to interpret and understand the meaning of the daily events. The details of life will gradually reveal themselves to be a language and education in the art of living. That is quite an inspiring theme for this week. And I've heard that these words were written by Soren Grind. Thank you, Soren. Is Soren here? Thank you, Soren. And we're going to come back to Soren in a few moments. Do you notice the words that I've highlighted in purple? There are 15 words highlighted in purple. Those 15 words may be the key words for the weekly theme. Let's see what you think. Our daily experiences are tools to interpret and understand a language, the art of living. Interestingly enough, those 15 words also explain what the Little Pearl Reflection series is about. Oh, this is In Out. Hi, In Out. He's the main character, one of the main characters in the story. As I was saying, those 15 words of our weekly theme explain my entire seven book series. A seven book series of, that's right, 70,000 words. So, in 15 words, 70,000 words were summarized. OK, let's go in and look at the story. The story takes place in one day. Seven books, 
in one day. Volume one is called The Light in the Window. Volume two, The Secret of the Smiling Rocks. Volume three, When the Plants Throw a Party. Volume four, Mystery at Adventure Lake. Volume five, where is Asterix? My talented and creative illustrator, Vodil Sabrina Christensen, had quite a difficult task to create seven book covers with the sun, Papa Soul, overhead. But as you can see, she did it. I think the most difficult one is book five, where she had to create the galaxy and our sun overhead. And she did. <laughs> Speaking of Bodil, as many of you know, I created Little Pearl's Reflection over 20 years ago. But I couldn't find an appropriate illustrator. In all the United States that I looked, I couldn't find one. So I kind of just put it away. At that time, I never heard of Martinez. Never heard of him. Then in 2012, I discovered Martinez. I recognized his symbol 11 from visions that I had had 20 years ago. I read Levis Bog, book one, and I knew I had to come to Clint and learn more. As I studied Martinez's works, thanks to Mary McGovern for the English translations, I suddenly realized the topics that I covered in my children's series, life is a journey of experiences, everything is alive, we are more than our physical body, there are other planes of existence, the answer is love, those were the same topics I was reading about in Martinez's works. So, I knew that God had led me to Clint, and I also knew I needed an illustrator who knew Martinez's works. In 2014, I saw Bodil's beautiful artwork, Thumbelina, in the Tarasan. Mary arranged an introduction for us, and she served as our interpreter. I found my illustrator. Don't you agree? I then began to wonder if perhaps my series might help children see our cosmic journey of life through the eyes of an adventurous child, Little Pearl. Now, many people think that I chose the name Pearl due to the idea of a pearl growing inside of an oyster, covered over and over again with life experiences until it becomes a beautiful white pearl that reflects all the rainbow colors of life. Well, yes, that was part of the reason. But my choice for Little Pearl involves more than that. My grandmother's name was Pearl. And my mother was named after her. But in order to avoid the confusion, they named her Margaret, which means Pearl. My sister is named Margaret, and my daughter is named Margaret. And the story is about all of them. Little Pearl's real name, then, of course, is Margaret. Well, sort of Margaret. <laughs> it's Margaret, Sophia, Anna, Maria, Smith. And so you can understand why they call her Little Pearl. And um, I was named after my Aunt Sarah. And I wonder what they are reading. Now we come to the title word, Reflection. Great thoughts in daily life. The English language, as you know, comes from many diverse languages. 
So there are actually seven definitions for the word reflection. Yes, seven definitions. Seven definitions, seven books. Isn't that fortunate for me? Sorry, that's difficult to read down at the bottom. So the Song of the Unicorns will be volume six this fall, and How to Ride a Rainbow will be volume seven, hopefully next spring, next summer. But that worked out pretty well for me. My story begins on a small Pacific island named Luta. It is the eve or the night before Little Pearl's seventh birthday. Little Pearl, there she is, and her mother Anna, there she is. Oh, and Anna, her mother, is an astrologer. They are out watching the stars at night. All of a sudden, the clouds roll in. So Anna decides to go to the other part of the meadow to try and see the stars. Little Pearl decides to read a new adventure book that she has with her by candlelight. But she falls asleep. Suddenly, there's a loud crack. She wakes up, and she realizes it a bright, sunny day, her seventh birthday. But then she looks around, and her mother is gone. Oh, hi, Anna. Shh, we're not supposed to know where Anna is yet. Little Pearl decides to search for her lost mother by following the old winding river. Life is like a river around her island. Notice the colors. These are all books. Toward the big purple mountain. Did you see the big purple mountain? Right there? Oh, and right there? <laughs> During her travels, Little Pearl meets many types of characters. One of the tasks for Bodle and me was to create and make come alive rocks and plants and animals. We together have created over 40 characters so far. You have met Inout. His real name is Inout, Up Down, Doorknob, Cinnamon Roll. That's a wonderful name. That was created by my son 35 years ago when he was three years old. We still have the rabbit that looks like that, and Bodo came up with the red glasses. So she put those two together. Then there's Sir J. Ruskin, or Rusty. This is a talking redbird and Little Pearl's mentor or teacher. He was named after the Victorian writer John Ruskin, who, like Martinez, was a visionary and social thinker. Then there's a 100-year-old tree named Abraham, or Abe, from the Hebrew word meaning father of many. He is celebrating his 100th birthday the same day as Little Pearl is celebrating her seventh. There's a storytelling pink crystal by the name of Rosie. Rosemary for Remembrance. Now, two of the characters may seem familiar to you. This is Grind. Now, I had to change the spelling of Soren's... I had to change the spelling of Soren's name, because if I had it spelled G-R-I-N-D, every child in America would be going, Grind? They would, so that is Grind. And I've off, I chose this because I've often heard Soren Grin ask the question, Who? Who are you? And then, at lunch one day, I asked Ole Terkelsen what he'd like to be in my series. <laughs> and of course, he said to me, an ass. Well, 
This is a children's series. I can't really put the word ass in the book. So he became a donkey. Meet Ole T the donkey. And he has a traveling companion, a monkey named Darwin, of course. <laughs> yeah. All of the names in the series are symbolic, and they provide children with archetypes from life. When I created the character of Miss Sophie from the Greek word Sophia, meaning wisdom, I had a picture in my mind, but I had only written a very brief description. Just as she was turning around to retrace her steps, she spotted a small white cottage with a thatched roof. It was surrounded by a beautiful flower garden. Then little Pearl saw an old woman tending the garden. She decided to walk towards the cottage, hoping that maybe the woman had seen her mother. But just then, the old woman who was tending the flower garden turned around and smiled. Her hair was gray and white, her back was bent, her skin was wrinkled, and her gray-blue eyes were clouded and sad. I emailed this to Bodo, and I added that Miss Sophie was blind and that I wanted her to wear blue and white. That's all I said. All of the colors in the Martinez books are symbolic as well. Meet Miss Sophie. This is the character that Bodo created exactly as I had seen her and envisioned her over 20 years ago. Now that's wonderful. Miss Sophie. Little Pearl is a child full of curiosity and the wonderment of life. As she travels around her island and searches for her lost mother, she learns about karma, about reincarnation, about the memory world of rocks, about the instinctively happy world of plants, about the helpful, yet at times conflicted world of animals, about the brotherly love of true humanity. She even catches a glimpse of the joy of the spiritual realms. I think it's a great read together series, and I found that many grandparents like to buy it because they read it together with their, their grandchildren and they enjoy getting involved in the mystery. I have placed three questions at the end of every one of the books so that whoever's reading with the child or if the child's reading by himself or herself, they can think about the questions and their questions about life. I was a teacher for 35 years, so I had to add questions. Um, they are questions for children and adults to reflect upon and to wonder about. And also, which I think is one of the special parts of this book, there is a puzzle piece in each volume. They can cut the puzzle piece out with a word or groups of words printed on it. The children can cut out the pieces and put together the puzzle. And before book seven, they can send me a guess through email as to what the solution of the puzzle is. The child who finds the solution to the puzzle gets to become the character in book seven that helps little Pearl find her lost mother, which of course is a beautiful, white, flying unicorn. So that unicorn is not named yet. That unicorn will not be named until next year. The puzzle solution is the main theme to the Little Pearl Reflection series, and by the way, is tied very closely to this week's weekly theme. Daily experiences 
and the art of living. Why a puzzle? Because all of our life experiences are like puzzle pieces, falling into place, helping us to piece together and to better understand the many wonders of life. That's what Little Pearl's reflection is all about. That's what Little Pearl is learning on her journey as she's moving around her island. That's the art of living. That's what makes life wonderful. Thank you.